What were the biggest surprises for the Buffalo Bills in 2023? What were the best individual game performances for the Bills in 2023? We're going to reflect on those items today on Locked On Bills. You are Locked On Bills, your daily Buffalo Bills podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Bills Mafia? It's Joe Marino, author of Go Bills and Buffalo's Run, also the co-host of the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast, and I'm your host of Locked On Bills. I want to thank you for making Locked On Bills your first listen every day, and a big welcome and shout out to our everydayers. You know who you are. Those of you who never miss a single episode, I appreciate y'all being here very, very much. I'd also like to invite you to subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Well, folks, welcome. Glad you're here. We're going to have a fun conversation today. We've gotten into some meaty discussions this week coming out of the Bills playoff loss to the Chiefs. and. To close out the week, I want to be a little bit more lighthearted, and we're going to have a good conversation, but it's not going to be quite as meaty, like I said, as some of the stuff we've gotten into to this point this week. And then, of course, next week, we're going to start really reflecting on the 2023 season through our performance review series, where we're going to assess every player, every component of the Buffalo Bills, and that'll lay the foundation for everything that's to come, right? We're going to talk about how this team can improve. Well, let's really seriously evaluate what it is so we can have good conversations the rest of the offseason. So some good stuff coming up. But for today, I want to reflect on the biggest surprises for the Bills in 2023 and the best individual game performances for the Bills in 2023. Shout out to one of our Lockdown Bills subtext community members for suggesting the idea of ranking or, or coming up with a list of the best individual game performances in 2023. So that's coming up here later today. But I do want to start with the biggest surprises on the offensive side of the football. And I have five of them, and I'll have five for the defense as well. And these are going to be the biggest positive surprises, right? Like things that went well for the Bills that I didn't necessarily feel it would perform to the level that it did. So that's what you can expect here as I work through this list. And I have them in order one through five, but I don't think the order is important here. These are just things that I want to point out. It's not like I'm ranking them one more than the other. So let's get into it. The offensive surprises for the Buffalo Bills. I've got five of them. The first thing I want to get into is Spencer Brown. Spencer Brown at right tackle had a terrific season. And that was a big question mark for so many going into the season. And it was a question mark for me, too. I know that I've been a lot more interested in allowing Spencer Brown to have this opportunity to continue to start. I've defended him a ton. And, um, you know, it certainly looks like I was I, I was on top of that one. But I didn't expect this, right? I, I expected he could be a serviceable starter. And I think by the end of the season, he is more than a serviceable starter. He looks like an above average starter for the Buffalo Bills. And him realizing his ceiling was a big reason why the Bills were able to run the ball like they were, well, why Josh Allen, I think, had the best pass protection of his career. And I loved how he got better throughout the course of the season. You know, early on, the Bills faced some really good pass rushers, including Max Crosby from the Raiders. And early on, they had to give him a ton of help, right, in the first few games. But as it progressed, he got more and more comfortable, got more and more confident. And they didn't have to give his, him as much help, and he just played well because he's a good tackle, not to mention what he did in the run game, how he was involved as a puller as the season moved along. So like his role in the offense gradually became more and more on a weekly basis, and he kept on answering. And we went from many people thinking that this is potentially the biggest question the Bills have to, well, we – we got to see what Spencer Brown's got next year because this is probably a player you want to extend for a contract. So we'll let it play out. But Spencer Brown performing at 
a, a, I don't know want to say a high level, but p- performing much better than most people anticipated and, and proving to be a quality starter for this team is a big surprise. Number two, and maybe this is more of a surprise to me than other people, but James Cook, and not necessarily that James Cook was productive. It's just how productive he was. 281 touches. I never imagined that. Never. They didn't get, they didn't let Devin Singletary come close to that much volume. And I thought it would be more of a a market share in the backfield. But this was the James Cook show. And certainly Latavius Murray got his chances. Ty Johnson sprinkled in Damian Harris a little bit. But this was James Cook, 281 touches. I if you would have asked me, would the Bills ever have a back under Sean McDermott that would have this much volume? I probably would have said, Yeah, I don't think so. I don't I think that he really likes the platoon and and multiple backs working together. 281 touches for James Cook, especially James Cook. You know, kind of a slim build, a guy that was never a high volume ball carrier at Georgia, or of course last year as a rookie. 281 touches. That is that is a lot. That's a lot more than I anticipated. And of course, 1,567 yards from scrimmage, six most in the NFL this season. So the volume and the production from James Cook in year two, I didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming. I thought he'd get 200 to 225 touches, over 1,000 yards from scrimmage, but this was a level that I never anticipated. Number three, Josh Allen having 15 rushing touchdowns. I, I mean, on one hand, it's you, you don't put it past Josh Allen to have a big statistical performance in any particular category, but 15 rushing touchdowns surprises me. I mean, that's an NFL record. He set an NFL record for rushing touchdowns in a season by a quarterback. His previous career high for rushing touchdowns in a season was back in 2019 when he had nine. He topped that by six. And so just an impressive feat. And maybe it speaks more to the Bills not really having a short yardage back that they loved. And so you had a lot of, you know, push pushes there to get him into the end zone. But 15 rushing touchdowns, an NFL record. Yeah, I didn't have that down on my uh, my bingo card entering the season. So that definitely surprised me that he had that many rushing touchdowns. Number four, the same offensive line for all 17 games and, and really 19, including the playoff games. For the Bills to be able to have the same five players in the same five spots for the entire season, you just don't count on that. And and the Bills were very fortunate to have that level of continuity, and we saw this unit develop so wonderfully in Aaron Cromer's second season with the group. They were, they were, I mean, very clearly to me, the best offensive line the Bills have had yet under Sean McDermott. And the continuity, like the, the surprising piece here is that all five of them played all 17 games. And really, you within those 17 games, you didn't really have guys missing time, right? It was either late in the fourth quarter, you're pulling starters because you're ahead. I mean, how many snaps were actually missed due to injury? You could probably count them on two hands, right? Pretty impressive for the Bills to have that level of continuity and then the performance to follow it up, right? You're happy that it was those five guys for every single game because they played well together and they were healthy. And that was huge. And then my last thing offensively is just the rookie production. You had a a situation here where there was a lot of narratives about the Buffalo bills and whether or not they have an appetite for playing rookies under Sean McDermott. And I, I never really thought that was true. Well, you saw, Osiris Torrance take every offensive snap for the Buffalo Bills this year, the only player that can say he did that. And then Dalton Kincaid had a historically great rookie season for a tight end. 73 catches, it's the fourth most ever for a rookie tight end. 673 yards, that's the 10th most ever for a rookie tight end. And so for that to be a narrative that the Bills don't want to play rookies, and then for them to have an offensive lineman start and play every single play of the season, and to have a historic output from a rookie tight end, that's big time. And so I would say that's a bit of a surprise. I mean, in hindsight, it doesn't feel that surprising, but for it to happen, I think that was important for this Buffalo Bills team. Oh, by the way, I lied. I do have one more offensive uh, nugget here. We'll get to that here 
in just a moment, so be sure to stick with me. But folks, this episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off our chest, big or small. Certain things can really start to get to you, and it's important to let that out, especially to someone who's unbiased on your life. Therapy can be different for everyone. And look, most of us have bigger problems than our favorite sports team, and it's important to get things off your chest every once in a while. It's helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself. It's not just for those who've experienced major trauma. So if you've been thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. Just visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOn to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOn. Folks, the NFL playoffs are here, but there's still plenty of time to get in on the action over at FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you simply place a $5 bet. That's $150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is awesome. So many different ways that you can bet like a live same game parlay. You can find bets in the new Explore tab. They have a parlay hub, spreads, player props, over, unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right. The surprise that I left off, I thought I had five and five. I don't. I have six and four. The offensive surprise was that from week seven on, week seven on, that's a huge sample size. Dalton Kincaid led the Buffalo Bills in receiving yards. From week eight on, Khalil Shakir led the Buffalo Bills in receiving yards. And in the case of Khalil Shakir from week eight on, he had more than double the targets of Stephon Diggs. And so while I I said this is all going to be positive in terms of pleasant surprises, you could kind of make that a bit of a negative when you consider the Stefan Diggs element, right? Because he's supposed to lead the team in receiving. But I think the positive is that you've had playmakers emerge for this football team and Dalton Kincaid and Khalil Shakir, who were the offensive uh, primary producers in the passing game for Josh Allen for more than half the season. And that includes the playoffs. So. It's nice to see more playmakers not only be trusted, have those opportunities, and produce. It's not just like the idea that this is Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs and figure it out, that's that ain't a thing anymore. Dalton Kincaid, your Bills leading receiver from week seven on, week eight on, it's Khalil Shakir. All right, I do have four defensive surprises, so let's get to those now. Uh, I think this one is going to make sense for everybody. It's Terrell Bernard. Just like we started the offensive conversation with Spencer Brown and that being a big question mark for so many people, middle linebacker was a massive question mark. Moving on from Tremaine Edmonds, letting him walk in free agency. Terrell Bernard, third round pick, only played one game the previous season against the Jets. He looked bad. I had a lot of concerns about this, a lot. But this dude was a dude, a playmaker for the Buffalo Bills, that middle linebacker. And there is no question about this dude being the quarterback of this defense next year and for the foreseeable future. Impact starter for the Bills. Like, not just a get-by player. A impact starter Terrell Bernard became for this football team. I know that stats don't always tell the story, but my goodness, he filled up the stat sheet. 143 tackles. 10 tackles for loss, nine quarterback hits, six and a half sacks, three interceptions, five pass breakups, and three fumble recoveries. I mean, that is production. Splash plays, right? That was our big thing with Tremaine Edmonds. It was hard to really measure his value because what I at least had to explain to people is that, yeah, it's, you wish he made more plays, but it's the plays that he takes off the menu for the opposing teams. And, you know, he's good in zone coverage and has this amazing range and, you know, wingspan. And and it's really hard to complete passes over the middle of the field against the Bills because of Tremaine Edmonds. Well, it's still hard to complete passes over the middle of the field against the Bills because of Terrell Bernard. Oh, by the way, he also makes splash plays. Is there any doubt in your mind? Like, if you had to ask yourself right now, who would you rather have? Terrell Bernard or Tremaine Edmonds? Who's, Who's saying Tremaine? Nobody. Not to mention the contract piece of it. 
Like, let's say they were paid the exact same amount. You'd pick Terrell Bernard, right? He's a better player, in my opinion. Didn't see that coming. Pleasant surprise, and I'm happy about it. And then the next one, I think we have to talk about Tyrell Dotson. Not not to the same extreme here, right? Like, let's let's pump the brakes a little bit. But Tyrell Dotson was a big-time surprise for this football team. Put him in the same bucket with Terrell Bernard entering the season where you just didn't really know what you had. And unfortunately, Matt Milano getting injured opened the door for Tyrell Dotson to play. But he settled in and, and was really solid, really good at the things the Bills asked him to do. I know that there was some schematic things that they had to do with personnel to overcome, you know, where he lacks in coverage with Jordan Poyer rolling down and playing linebacker and bringing in a third safety and Tyrell Dotson leaving the field. But for what they asked him to do, he executed at a high level. It was a really nice complimentary piece to Terrell Bernard. And for this linebacker core to go from Tremaine Edmonds and Matt Milano to Matt Milano being out for the season in week five, to Tyrell Dotson having to step into this role and how those guys performed. You got to be excited about it. And I, I'm we're going to have some interesting conversations about Tyrell Dotson's future. He's an expiring contract. And you feel like with Dorian Williams and Balin Spector, you'd like to think that there's not a whole lot of urgency to have to bring back a Tyrell Dotson and his market. It's going to be fascinating. Is there a team out there that assessed what he did for the Bills this season and say, yeah, I think he's at least a, a, a sufficient level starter. Let's give him four, five, six million dollars a year and, and roll with him. Or is he going to be viewed as a depth player? Is Is he going to be most valuable to the Bills on a modest deal. Like, his market's going to fascinate me. But what he did for the Bills this year was outstanding and a pleasant surprise. Two more on defense. The next one is 54 sacks. The Buffalo Bills had 54 sacks on defense. That's the fourth most total sacks in the NFL. And in terms of percentage of plays that resulted in a sack, third in sack percentage. I mean, the Bills were like, by, like definitely one of the best teams in the NFL at sacking the quarterback. And zero of those sacks came from Von Miller. If I would have told you before the season that the Bills would get 54 sacks in 2023, and I asked you how many of those came from Von Miller, surely you would have said eight, nine, ten, zero. I mean, obviously, Leonard Floyd, 10 and a half. At Oliver, nine and a half. AJ Epinesa, six and a half. You got another six and a half from Terrell Bernard. I mean, you just, a lot of guys showed up and made sacks. And that's been a, a gripe of a lot of fans, I know for sure, right? I had a lot of conversations through the years about the value of pressures. And it's really good to pressure the quarterback. Of course, it's better to sack the quarterback. And the Bills did that at a high level. This year, certainly compared to previous seasons. And then the last one here that I have down for defense is Christian Benford. And I think we we learned last season that Christian Benford can play. He became an impact starter for the Bills. To the point where he's playing over Kyer Elam and, and like nobody's mad about it. Because Christian Bedford's a friggin' good starting cornerback in the NFL. 16 games this year he played. In 10 of those, he allowed two or fewer catches. In 10 of the 16 games that Christian Benford played in this year, started for the Bills, two or fewer catches. I think he gave up more than 50 yards in a game like maybe twice this season. He was terrific. Good tackler unbelievable ball skills, and I'm really excited for him to be a fixture for this defense for a long time. And what's interesting is he's the most logical player, in my opinion, that you would talk about to convert to safety. But he's really good at corner. Why do you want to mess with that, right? It makes that a very complicated conversation for me. But Christian Benford developing into an impact starter, and and I think everyone just understands it because if you watch him play, you can tell he's just a good football player. To me, that's a, a pleasant surprise. So on the defensive side, Terrell Bernard, 54 sacks on defense, Christian Benford, and Tyrell Dotson.
All right, just a moment. We're going to reflect on what I thought were the 10 best individual performances for Buffalo Bills players in 2023. So that should be a fun conversation. Be sure to stick with me. Folks, you got to check out Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the most fun, most exciting, easiest way to play daily fantasy sports. The format is incredible. It's just you against the numbers. It's not you against thousands of other players, including pros and sharks. It's just you against numbers. Here's what you do. You select two or more players. You pick more or less on the projected stats. You place your entry. That's it. Doesn't take long. Picks can be made in under a minute. And then when you win, the withdrawals are super, super quick. So check it out. All these sports on TV right now, whether it's football, basketball, hockey, you can pick stat projections from multiple sports and, and really put it together to have the entry that you love. So check it out. Go to prizepicks.com slash NFL and use code LOCKEDONNFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that's prizepicks.com slash NFL and use code LOCKEDONNFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. All right, so we're going to close this out by me giving you my 10 best individual performances by Buffalo Bills players in 2023. And again, no order here. These are just the 10 that I singled out as what I thought were the best individual performances. And I did give myself one rule. I could only use the same player twice. I didn't want this to just be like seven Josh Allen games and then sprinkling in three more. So no player shows up more than two times. And in fact, only two players, ah, three players do show up twice. And again, no particular order. These are just who I thought were the best 10 individual performances. And then I will sneak in four honorable mentions. All right, so here we go. Josh Allen, of course, does have two spots on this list. Uh, Week four against Miami, 21 of 25. 320 yards, four touchdowns, no interceptions, also added a rushing touchdown. So five touchdowns and 21 of 25 is crazy. That's just insane efficiency. And that was a, that was a big game, right? Like the Dolphins coming off of scoring 70 against Denver. You feel like that's they're this juggernaut, right? The greatest show on surf, a revolutionary offense. Josh Allen had that stinker in week one, and then he bounced back with those good games against the Raiders and the Commanders, and this was the big test, right? Miami. Josh Allen lit him up, 48-20. to 20. They won by four touchdowns. Might have been my favorite performance of the season. The other Josh Allen game that I have down, and it was hard for me to pick the next one, and it was really hard for me to pick a, a, a loss, but week 12 against Philadelphia, Josh Allen was sensational, keeping in mind that this was played outdoors in like very consistent rain. 29 of 51, 339 yards, two touchdowns, did have an interception, 81 rushing yards and two rushing touchdowns. So like 440 yards of offense and four touchdowns in very, very difficult conditions on the road. I will never forgive uh, Sean McDermott for not giving Josh Allen a chance with 20 seconds and two timeouts before overtime there, especially when he was playing like this. And you certainly think a lot about him not throwing that ball to Gabe Davis when he was wide open for the, for you know, the mis- mis- miscommunication or whatever that was. But 440 yards, four touchdowns. It was, it was one, it was heroic. I think that was the title of the podcast. Sean McDermott blows heroic performance from Josh Allen. But it was awesome. Absolutely awesome. So those are my two favorite Josh Allen performances this season. Against Miami in week four, at Philly in week 12. I have a Stefan Diggs performance, and you have to go back to early in the season to see anything good from Stefan Diggs. But week four against Miami, six catches on seven targets, 120 yards, three touchdowns. Big time performance. Um, Miami was all out of sorts. They tried to play like Cater Kohu on him quite a bit. And the Bills diced him up. Three touchdowns, 120 yards in the efficiency, right? Seven targets, six catches. It was outstanding. Of course, that big play where it's down the left sideline and I don't know what, three or four different Miami Dolphins defenders try to tackle him and just fell off a Josh or fell off a Steph and he bolted for a touchdown. That was a fun one. The next one I have is uh, James Cook. James Cook against the Dallas Cowboys week 15. Unbelievable performance. 25 carries, 179 yards, touchdown, 
added 42 receiving yards and a touchdown. So 27 touches for 221 yards and two touchdowns. That was that was a big time game. That was kind of a big coming out party. Dallas coming to town, you know, Bills trying to go on this run, passing games in a slump, and James Cook carried them. Dominant performance, lots of yards after contact, lots of force missed tackles. It was a sensational performance. I do have another James Cook performance on here. Week 14 against the Kansas City Chiefs. I thought he was awesome in this game. 10 rushes, 58 yards, 5 catches, 83 yards, and a touchdown. So 15 touches for 141 yards and a touchdown against a great Chiefs defense. That's It's over 9 yards per touch on 15 touches against Kansas City. I thought he was able to make Kansas City pay for spying Josh Allen. Kansas City likes to spy Josh Allen. And James Cook made him pay for that. And I, again, I said this a lot in the last couple of weeks, but like that was definitely a game where I felt like he deserved more opportunity on the ground. But obviously 15 touches and 151, 141 yards is really maximizing your chances to touch a football. Number six, I have Gabe Davis week 16 against the Los Angeles Chargers. Big time performance for Gabe when the, the team really needed him. Again, just kind of in the middle of that passing game slump. And he gave them four catches for 130 yards and a touchdown. I think the Bills were down 10-0, to zero, and that's when Josh Allen rolled to his right and found Gabe down the field for a 57-yard touchdown when the team needed a spark. And then, if I'm not mistaken, the game-winning score was set up by a 42-yard strike to Gabe, uh, and then three plays later, Josh Allen had a rushing touchdown. So he was absolutely a catalyst for that win, and the Bills needed him in the worst way. So six or four catches, 130 yards, and a touchdown against the Chargers for Gabe Davis in week, uh, week 16. The rest of these are going to be defense. Number seven is Terrell Bernard. Week three against Washington. You could pick a lot of different players in that Washington game, but I, Terrell Bernard was phenomenal. I think he was the defensive player of the week in the AFC that week. Seven tackles, five solo, two sacks, an interception, a fumble recovery, two tackles for loss, and a pass breakup. This was like week three, so we're We'd, we'd really liked what Terrell Bernard did in the first couple of games, but this was the moment where you're like, oh, man, he's a dude. He's a playmaker for this defense. And the Bills made a ton of plays in that game, but TB was an absolute stud that day. Number eight, I have Ed Oliver, week 16 against the Chargers. Two sacks, three hurries in 33 pass rush snaps. He did have three run stuffs as well, but he got that game-winning sack on that last drive where they were, you know, the Chargers had a chance. Ed Oliver with a clean win to end the game, had a sack earlier. The splash plays were there, and you know certainly a game where everybody who, or anybody who thought maybe Ed Oliver was overpaid, realized that he wasn't. Number nine and 10 are both Rasul Douglas games. Uh, first Rasul Douglas game, week 11 against the Jets. Targeted four times in coverage, gave up zero catches, two interceptions, a pass breakup, a run stuff, and a fumble recovery, that was big time. One of his first games on the team. And then in week 17, so number 10 is Rasul Douglas, week 17 against the New England Patriots, was targeted six times in coverage, gave up two catches, two interceptions, pass breakup, and a pick six in that game. So Rasul Douglas only plays you know, when he's on the team for like 10 games. Twice, I thought it was two of the best individual performances by a Bills player in 2023. My honorable mentions, uh, Taron Johnson versus Dallas. Phenomenal job against CeeDee Lamb in that game. And a bunch of run stuffs. Matt Milano against Vegas. Uh, he was awesome in that game. Had an interception. Daquan Jones against Washington. Daquan Jones against Miami are two games that really stand out to me. And then Sam Martin against the Patriots. Six punts. They're all inside the 20. Unbelievable job in that game. So those are the ones that stood out to me. Again, my rule was that I can only put the same player on there twice. But would love to hear from you. Like what what performance did I not include that you're like, Joe, how did you not put this in there? Hit me up in the YouTube comments here and let me know if there's any glaring omissions there. All right, folks, really appreciate you being here. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this close to this week of podcast. Looking forward to next week. We're really going to evaluate. It's going to be some some good, honest conversations about every component, right? We'll start with like Brandon Bean and, and the decisions that he made. We'll get into the coaching staff individual positions. We are going to get into some big dynamics with every single player. So make sure that you are subscribed. We'd love it if you took a second to rate, review, and share the podcast. Have a great weekend.
If there's any big breaking news, I'll be back for you. I won't make you wait. Go Bills, and I look forward to catching up with you again on Monday.